Okay, this is a theory on the so-called Roanoke puzzle secret by Byron Price. And here is the part one, as I call it. Part two, I'm going to call the uh, Roanoke side. I believe there's two sides to this puzzle. And uh, I'm Chuck Knapp, and uh, teammate is Keith Holliday. And uh, this is the Scarecrow Tin Man, as I call it. And there are references to the Wizard of Oz in this puzzle. And, well, let's get started. Uh, if you look initially, the thing that kind of was striking is that on the Tin Man's right side, our left side, those little rivets are equidistant spacing where the ones on the other side are. There's a gap or a different spacing as you can see over here and that basically the scarecrow tin man is telling you there's two ways to go here one side is the Roanoke the other is the Wright Brothers Monument you can see the actual flight uh, path of the Wright Brothers and their landing and you can see that the space obviously they're not the same distances between those and I believe that that's what this is referring to here. This would be the takeoff point. Each one of these little rivets, if you look, I believe are like blips on a radar screen or pathways or steps, however you want to call it. And you'll see that in a little bit. Um, I'm not going in the Roanoke side, but uh, on this part, it's very interesting. If you get going over here, you're going around in a circle. And you can go off on this path, or you can go this way. And I believe the correct side is the Wright Brothers. Okay, you should be familiar with the verse. Um, I'm not going to go into that. You can look it up. Uh, the beginning, though, does say, past two friends of Octave in December. And the interesting thing is that Octave... I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Chanute was the French engineer that helped the Wright brothers with their flying and the engineering part of the flying. And this guy, I guess, was known as the uh, father of aviation or something like that. Anyway, the two friends of Octave are, of course, Orville and Wilbur Wright. These busts were initially inside the tower or back in Byron's day, they were inside the tower. Now, they're out front now. That's what this shows. So, that's the starting point. These puzzles, I believe, had a starting point. And if you follow the verse, they will move you to a place maybe once or twice, and that's where the cask is located. Some of the people solves, I see them bouncing you all over New York City or wherever. And nowhere in the verse does it tell you to move here, move there. I think, personally, that's kind of out there. Um, any event, to the verse, uh, it, it's past the two, the two friends of Octave to the land near the window. Well, on this monument, there's actually windows on this door. It's a metal door, but they're, and they're metal windows. And I think what I was referring is you go past those guys, the guys being the bust of Orville and Wilbur, and you uh, end up on the landing near the window of the tower. That's the land near the window. And in many places, these words have double meaning, and verses will mean more than one thing. In this case, I think uh, this is our starting point. It's the step landing near the window of the tower. Reason I think that is because if you look at the window, and part of the verse is, ride the man of Oz. Many people interpret that as you go across the bomb bridge. Well, I, I can't see riding the man of Oz as meaning go across the bridge, but it can be a meaning that gets you over to Roanoke Island, which can confuse you or get you going in a circle. But to ride the Man of Oz, to me, means you get on the balloon. That's in one of the, quote, little windows. A balloon. There's, that, is a, that is an old 
drawing of a balloon. So, here we have a balloon. To ride the Man of Oz, you have to go get in the basket. And the balloon basket is the parking lot of the airplanes of the FFA airport, airstrip. So you're going to go from number one down towards that balloon. So, and you'll see some more here coming up. It talks about a road that leads to a dark forest. Well, the dark forest can be all of this or any of this. And there are a couple of roads that go here. This is a little bit busy, but there's many paths to get you past circle and square. And that's part of the verse, is after circle and square, where white is in color. And the white is the threshold markings. This used to be a 2 over here for 0, 2, 0. They changed it to 0, 3, 0. But in any event, if you follow the yellow line, you're going through the dark forest, and you'll see how you, you go past circle and past the square to arrive at point 2. Uh, in the Wizard of Oz, and I said the references to the Wizard of Oz, there's a dark forest. Okay, if you're on the yellow path I just showed you, you come through the airplane path back here, you come down to the sidewalk, and you go past this 8 on the sidewalk, and you end up right here. Uh, and I guess this Joseph McKinney took this on Google Earth. I'm guessing at that. I'm not that knowledgeable about Google Earth, but I can use it. <laughs> uh, to the right is the airfield. There's a gate right along here. The gate has been changed, but there's a fence line along the sidewalk and on the other side. And behind there is a, a pilot uh, lounge, or and that's been redone from uh, the 80s. But anyway, the, it says a path beckons. Well, here's a path. Uh, and it talks, of, oh, here, here is a clue where we're talking uh, driftwood and the number eight and gate eight octave is obviously eight. And I give credit for David Foster for, for finding this, the Moody Blues. And uh, on that album is song number five is driftwood. And if you, if for the younger people, you should listen to it. It's a good song. The older people, like me, recognize it from way back. But uh, Driftwood, Driftwood and Micah. Micah can be a lot of different things. But I'm going to move on here. And if you look at the drawings in the back of the book, and this is from image from page 91, if you look right here, you'll see the Wright Brothers Tower. You'll see the 8 right here. And that, I believe, is the 8 on the asphalt uh, on the sidewalk, excuse me, and I believe this leg is the asphalt, and you'll see that in a minute. This looks like a shovel, and the shovel dig spot will be right there. So we're looking for a line of sight that aligns the tower, the asphalt extension, or hump, or uh, the bowing out, and the dig spot. And if you look, in, uh, this is the guy that was taking the photo holding up the camera. I, again, I think it's Joseph McKinney, it says here. Anyway, anyways, here's the eight. Here's the paved pathway. Here's the extension that I just pointed out on the other drawing. And if you, you look at that, it lines up with a line of sight from the monument through the edge all the way down. And there's our dig spot. And this is facing east. And there's some other things. If you look closer, here's, here shows the eight a little better. Uh, what I'm talking about, the shovel spay, uh, shovel image, or um, whatever you want to call it, the representation of a shovel. And here's the, uh, what I'm calling asphalt and asphalt extension. So uh, moving right along, if you look down, and this is looking north, uh, you're going to, as the verse says, look north at the wing and dig. If you look north, this is also referred to as a wing gate. It has a wing because it swings like a, 
open like a wing. And this gate has changed, but back in the day, and this shows the old uh, gate. There's a wheel, a roller. And we believe that under that, which may, which may be last touched or first st seen standing, is referring to that gate. And just for reference, the uh, FFA airstrip or airport is this way, and the Wright Brothers Monument is to your right. And uh, there's some other things in the artwork. Uh, this is a little speculation. Fence line, uh, you're going to roll open that gate. 30 degrees for the one o'clock. So the it's not right there. It's you roll that gate open like that. And you get one o'clock on the gate. Or the one o'clock angle, the 30 degrees being right here. So it's the arc. And then you'll see, as you'll see, we believe it's under that spot. And the reasons for that, this is a little representation that I drew, you have a metal bracket that holds that wheel, and that kind of looks like that, the metal bracket up here, and there's the key. So I, I just drew that in, and some speculation that that's where the key is, and there's some other things on here, and uh, of course the midline of the gate would be here. This is the the wing gate, the swing gate. The wheel would be right here, and the jewel or cask is right under the wheel. Okay, and this just shows how the midline is over here, the wheel is over here, and it makes sense because when that gate underneath, underneath the axis of that wing is where the wheel would be. There was, that's why this is not lined up with the midline. If you look at the artwork, okay? Um, so anyway, remember this shape right here. We'll see it again. Uh, metal fence, the wheel frame. Oh, okay. So, so we're talking, looking from above that that's the dig area right in there. Obviously, here's the monument, and here's the airstrip of the airfield, and let's look at some numbers. There's some numbers found in the drawing. Here's a 3, here's a 6, giving us 36. Up here's a 2, here's a 5, that could be 25 or 52. Over here is 7, 5, 7 and 5. And if you look at the location of the cast, latitude and longitude, it's 36.0052, and the, um, the, the longitude is 75.40.16 west. So you got your 36, 52, and 75. The, those were the three numbers that we got off the painting. Okay, now we're going to get back to some of the things we had talked about with the dots being a pathway. Uh, if, you're on a, if you're in an airplane, you're going to circle, you're going to land, you're going to come down, you're going to go to the parking lot. Why is this dot right here? What is this rivet right here? Why just stick a, a random rivet right there? Well, there's got to be a reason. Well, we believe that's the cask. And if you note this right here, you'll see this. On this, this top of this looks like the tower beacon on the Wright Brothers Monument, which would make sense with the Wright Brothers flights being these dots over here. Uh, this would be the tower. Now, if you're up the tower, how do you get to that dot right there? Well, this yellow line would be going through the dark forest because you go through and you go right, you turn right on the sidewalk and you come up and you're there. And there's more than one way to get through. If this is the whole area, if this is the dark forest area, there are several ways to get to that point. And that's what this is showing here. The fly-in, you fly in. Uh, the asphalt path is here. And there, actually there's another way, a dirt pathway that goes here. 
where they used to land the airplane or um, park the airplanes, excuse me, if you look on a historical photograph. I'm going to keep moving here. So, um, some speculation down here this dark area could be the fence opening with the padlock on the gate. And you notice there's a spoon right here. Everybody knows that spoon, but uh, we'll see that spoon shape in a minute. Uh, so if this is the key, and the key fits in the lock, it's going to unlock the gate. I don't know if the gate was locked or not, but I'm just throwing out a speculation of, of what we were looking at. Okay, here's the spoon shape is the purple and the little P shape. But remember, we moved from number one down here to number two. And you, like I said, there's several ways you can get there through the dark forest. The yellow path, there's a path through here. There used to be airplanes that would pull in and park right here back in the day. Uh, there, and there was, so there was another gate or opening here. And of course, the long way around the dark forest is this way. Okay, page 90. There's a stylus. Um, this, this is related to the Wright brothers. And you can see down here, it says set the record, set the record, set the record, like it's stuck when you, or you had a, uh, you had a something on your album that, that caused that to skip and it got stuck. Well, that's what the Wright brothers were doing. They were, each time they were setting the record. And so that's just a reference, we believe, to the Wright brothers. Uh, this is a drawing from the front of the book. And I'm going to point out a few things. There's a windsock here windsock now this part is speculation this could be the runway that sure looks like the cask right there under this wing could be the wing of the gate i don't know this guy's laying down looks like could be wright brothers laid down in the in their airplane to fly it and i switched this from two to three because i was trying to match those up with the the number on the runway but who knows I'm just throwing that out there. Okay, here's the, here's kind of an interesting thing. If you have a phonograph or record player, here's your record, here's your tone arm, here's your cartridge, here's your stylus that makes contact with the record. And you can kind of see that indicated in this image. Here's the, here is the same thing, just turned differently. Uh, the, the runway represents the tone arm cartridge. And if you look right here, this is where your stylus would be that would make contact with the record. And there's a stylus right there. That uh, sidewalk shape would be like the diamond or the cartridge stylus. Uh, let's get through this. Uh, under spotter's tips, uh, page 90, it talks about sledgehammer on a turntable. You can look at this as a sledgehammer on a turntable. There's your sledgehammer, there's your turntable. And here's page 90, uh, sledgehammer, which is hard on sensitive turntables. And uh, splattered boots is referenced here. And we're going to get to that with, and part of this is the Wizard of Oz material. Uh, oh, forgot, this is another, also, uh, this is page 91, and if you look closely at the figure right up here, that's a zero and that's a three. Well, the Wright brothers' first flights were in 1903. Uh, there's the eight, as we pointed out before, on the sidewalk, and the Wright brothers' touchdown points would be these points. This, if this represented the Wright brothers flying, There'd be a touchdown point. There'd be one, and there'd be one. And they're trying to set the record. They're flying. Now, the tower wasn't there, obviously, but this is representing the flights from the tower out, which uh, is just a representation. Uh, okay, back to the Wizard of Oz. This is the gatekeeper, Wizard of Oz, or one depiction. And I think it's interesting he's holding a key. Okay, page 114. Uh, if you notice, this looks like a wheel here. And you'll notice there's a face here. There's feet here. Now, and he looks like he's been squashed. Well, if 
your blue boots were splattered you when you got squashed that you could be represented by that and notice the shape of this right here is the shape of the belt is the shape of the wheel uh, roller so you got some wheels in here and the numbers uh, one two three uh, appear frequently in these things so I don't know if it's three feet from the edge of the gate or not I don't know where that's where that's coming from uh, this is total speculation it looks like a key right there anyway getting to the uh, yogurt there's been a lot of comments about the yogurt and that comes from a uh, yogurt container and this drawing right here um, if you look closely, there's possible key and some faces on the guy up on top. And he's the gatekeeper, and I think he's the same guy right here. I don't know why he's twice, but he is. If you look behind, these look like propeller blades on an airplane. Well, there's an airport behind the gate, behind the fence. Here's, the, here's your fence, and here's your gate. Okay. And there's that shape again we were looking at. It's the same shade on shape on the belt in the drawing. It's the shape, same shape as the uh, bracket that holds the holds the wheel. And maybe the same shape as the wheel itself. And in the Wizard of Oz, the Wicked Witch gets crushed, and that's kind of what happened to the gatekeeper in that other image. He got crushed. And in the Wizard of Oz, you also have the Wicked Witch, and you can see in the white space a witch. You can see a monkey over here, and the dark space is a tornado. All right, let me move through this. Again, this looks like a wheel, and he got run over by the wheel. He's been squashed. So it's just another confirmation the cask is under the path of the gate's wheel. And this was off of the uh, Moody Blues official video and this guy reminded me of the individual on top of the yogurt house up above here I don't know but anyway I thought that was interesting okay a few other things and I'm not going to cover everything Keith Holiday has some more some more information some more clues but I'm going to go through a few things. This looks like, I believe, a star. And I think David Foster pointed this out and made a star And when you connect this. and But if you look, uh, this looks like a power line insulator. This could be the water tower. This, and Let me show you. The, uh, the orbs could be lights around the monument. And it's kind of the way things line up. The power line you can see in the distance. The water tower is over here. And the uh, lights are orbs in the in the painting. Okay, now this was just kind of interesting, and I threw this in here. When you line up the aerial, and yes, they had maps in Byron Price's time, and he did use them, obviously. But it lines up perfectly with this part of the drawing down here. And then this line right here matches exactly as the... Uh, path to the Wright Brothers flights. So I don't know if that's really significant or means anything, but it, it was quite a match. Okay, so uh, a few other things. I believe this oval up here represents the tire wheel, the keys under the tire wheel. Here's uh, three dots over here, so maybe that's three feet over from the gate, from the gate latch. I don't know. This is something that can be found. This pattern can be found in the ship drawing, which we showed, which I showed earlier. All right. So the location of the cast, we believe it to be at this point, and the the fence line, the fence runs along here. The gate with the roller and the wheel has been changed, unfortunately, but. It used to be there, and that gate used to open on that roller. A uh, few odds and ends. The waypoint inf indicator for the uh, Kill Devil Hills, if you're a pilot, you know what waypoints are. Waypoint. This is uh, WZO, and I believe that's for Wizard of Oz.
Wizard of Oz. Uh, okay. This is just speculation on the ending of the verse. Because we've gone through this and it says, look north at the wing and dig, this is just additional information to achieve. And I believe that there's some word play going on. Words obviously mean can mean different things. I think he had by, dauntless and inconquerable, as meaning beside the WBM area, Wright Brothers Monument area. Or it can mean by, like goodbye to the Wright Brother Monument because you're leaving that area and entering the airport area. I know, it's a stretch. And then determination is your goal, determination your goal, determination could mean the termination of the search. In other words, finding the cask is your goal, the termination of your search. Total speculation, I don't know. Okay, one last thing on this part, there is no probing, no GPR, no digging. Uh, we've requested it. I don't know how many other people have requested it, but it's not going to happen. Okay. And that's it. That's, that's the end of part one. And I kept it under 30 minutes, which was kind of my goal. Uh, I'm sure Keith Holliday will have additional information, stuff that I left out. There's a lot of good stuff that he's found, and I apologize to him for not including it. And also, I'm not including the Roanoke side. Uh, initially, I believe that, and as many people, that the cask was at that gate that's at the water line on the, uh, it's the um, Elizabethan Gardens. You go through that, and you come to the water's edge, and there's an old gate there. So, uh, part two, I, I will cover that. But this is it for today, and I hope you enjoyed this theory. Go ahead and beat it up, you know, go ahead and make your comments, whatever, and uh, good luck to everyone.